Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about pyramids, and in this particular case, I would apply our knowledge about pyramids to determining the volume of a very complicated figure. I was trying to draw it before starting <laughs> the lecture with my very limited artistic abilities. Anyway, this figure is called uh, cube octahedron and I will explain what it is later on. So, um, what exactly this is all about? This is just one of the lectures on advanced mathematics uh, for high school students. I presented it on unisor.com website. Uh, I suggest actually to look um, to, to watch this lecture from the website because it contains notes and uh, exams actually for those who are signed in, etc. So, cube octahedron, what this beast is about. All right, um, first of all, we have a cube. A, B, C, D, A prime, B prime, C prime, B prime. And then what we do, from each vertex, we cut the corner of this cube. Now, the way how we do it is the following. We divide in half uh, the side A, B, and A, D, and A, A prime, and connect these midpoints together, three points. I cut the plane through this, through these three points. And that cuts off this little pyramid. If these points are, let's say, P, Q, and R, I cut this pyramid A, P, Q, R from, from the cube. And I repeat exactly the same thing at every vertex and there are eight of them of this cube. Whatever remains, and this is something which I was trying to present in this picture, um, is actually called cube octahedron. It's part of this which is uh, related to the cube is basically uh, because we started with six um, faces of the cube and octahedron because you have additional eight um, faces of this figure which are a result of the cutting. So whenever we cut off this corner we left another face. So we have four, uh, we have six faces remaining from from the original original cube and eight additional faces which are the result of our section. Question is what part of the volume of the cube, initial cube, this cube octahedron actually um, retains? Well, obviously the easiest way is to calculate the volume of pyramid. There are eight of them and they are absolutely equal to each other. And subtract it from the volume of the cube, which is very easy. Now, what's tempting is to call the vertex itself of um, of the pyramid this this or this call it an apex of the pyramid and the triangle like pqr a, a basis uh, however it complicates the the calculations it's easier to basically consider this pyramid slightly differently i will consider arq as a base and P as apex. Now it's much easier because these are all right angles so we know the AP would be um, the altitude and the ARQ which is the right triangle would be the, um, the, the base. So it's very easy to calculate uh, the area of this particular uh, uh, triangle and the volume of the pyramid. So let's do it. Let's consider our cube has the side called the side lengths of A. Well then obviously the volume of the cube equals A cube. Now let's talk about the pyramid. Every pyramid out of these eight has 
um, this side equal to a divided by 2 and a r also and a p also all of them are half the edge of the original cube so let's just talk about this pyramid so this is a this is p and we have this pyramid so these are right angles <coughs> so this is a over 2 this is a over 2 and this is a over 2 now this is the right triangle and its area is equal to uh, a over 2 times a over 2 it times 1 half that's the area of the triangle now the altitude is also a over 2 right so I have to multiply it by the a over 2 and by one third because we're talking about pyramid right so one third of the product of the uh, area of the base and altitude so this is the volume of my pyramid equals to uh, a cube divided by uh, 48 now we have eight such pyramids now since we have eight such pyramids now the volume of eight pyramids is equal to a cube o over 48 times 8 which is a cube over 6 so the volume of um, our cube octahedron is equal to well if a cube, a cube over 6 is the volume of all these pyramids whatever remains is obviously 5a cube over 6 because we have to subtract from a cube we have to subtract a cube over 6 and that's what remains so this is basically the answer so the ratio is um, 5 6 you can say that the octa uh, cube octahedron takes 5 6 of the volume of the cube now incidentally if we want to calculate the volume of this um, cube octahedron in terms of its own um, uh, property and its own property is its side right so let's call this side B this and this and this and this and this all of these sides are equal to to B right because they're all uh, diagonals in this uh, particular well not diagonals it, it's just uh, it, it, it's hypotenuse if you wish of the uh, triangles with the side a over 2 right, right triangles so if my um, catheters is equal to a over 2 then hypotenuse b is equal to this right we are talking about um, Pythagorean theorem a over 2 uh, square plus a over 2 square is equal to b square right so uh, this would be my b right now if this is b then in terms of b this formula would look how well let's just resolve it for a and, and substitute into b so it's 2b over square root of 2 is equal to a now 2b over square root of 2 is actually b square root of 2 so instead of a, a, a cube i can substitute a instead of a b square root of 2 and i will have 5 b square root of 2 cube and well the parentheses should be here and divided by 6 which is, which is equal to 5 b cube now square root of 2 to the power of 3 is square root of 
2 to the power of 2 and 1. So it's 2 square root of 2 over 6, which is equal to 5 third b cubed square root of 2. So that's another representation of the volume of the um, cube octahedron <laughs> um, in terms of its own characteristic and its own characteristic is the length of its edge B. and that's the final formula and that's basically all I wanted to talk about in this today's lecture um, I do suggest you to uh, to try to do all these calculations yourself because it's kind of useful thing and uh, and it's a very interesting uh, figure this uh, cube octahedron it has uh, six square faces and each of these which are eight of them eight triangular faces right so if you will count how many faces and edges and uh, vertices this figure has it would be what we have faces faces is equal to uh, six squares from from the from the original cube plus eight triangles so it's 14 now edges uh, edges okay so we have hmm it's not easy to count them right uh, well I think we have four edges here and um, four here here and here so these are all edges uh, of the squares but triangles will not bring up any new edges so it looks like I have six uh, squares each of them has four edges so it's 24 Look, looks like it's 24 I think that's what it is because triangles do not bring any new edges because each edge of the triangle is actually edge of a corresponding square and squares between themselves do not have any common edges and now let's talk about uh, vertices okay so what's about vertices let's think about how to count vertices in a nice and convenient way um, well how about this I have six squares each square has four vertices however each vertex is counted twice as part of this and part of that so it looks like I have 12 so vertices seems to be 12 now let's count them differently if I'm counting only by triangles triangle has three vertices right now we have eight triangles uh, 3 by 8 is 24 and again every vertex in this case also counted twice in this triangle and in this tri triangle so it's again 12 so it looks like I'm right and let me just go back to the Euler's formula about relationship between F, E and V F plus V minus E equals 2 this is Euler's formula which we will still attend at some time in the future but it still checks here 14 plus 12 26 minus 24 is equal to 2 all right so that's it for today thank you very much um, I do suggest you to calculate whatever I just did on the board yourself and uh, good luck <laughs>